everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this is some leftover dye, uh, rinsed out of some measuring cups from a project where I dyed a lot of colors with pink and yellow. And I know that what I have in here is not very much dye at all, but in here, I have a lot more dye. Uh, it is the end of March 2025, and all of the liquid leftovers I've had so far this year have ended up in this container. Uh, we have a bunch of different colors. I have no idea what color it'll be. Sometimes if I had a liquid dye stock mixed and had like 20 milliliters or something of that left, that went in here. So this dye is not gonna be anywhere near as pastel as what I have here. Um, but I'm very curious what we have. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna pop on some gloves and we're gonna see if we can see anything about this color. Oh man. All right, so I would say it's leaning purple. Let's take a little bit of a paper towel and pop it in. It looks very dark. Whoa, we actually have something that is brown slash black, which is pretty surprising to me, honestly, because there's so many different colors in there that I guess I expected it to lean more one way or the other, but it's not ugly. Oh my goodness, I am so curious. Well, you know what we need to do, right? We're gonna take this whole jar worth. So that's probably over half of what I had in here. And we're gonna use this to dye some yarn. Since we're using leftover dyes, we have a leftover dye bath right here. Uh, this dye bath is warm. It started with some of those yellows and oranges in it. Uh, I think that the ratio is eight cups of water to two tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, but I'm gonna come over with this jar full of our mystery color and add it in. And you know, that's looking pretty dark. Uh, the reason why we're not using 100% of the dye is because I don't know how pigmented it is going to be. But depending on what happens here, uh, we will decide what we want to do. So I'm going to go quickly pre-soak some yarn or at least pre-wet some yarn. Or should we do it dry? <gasps> no, let's do it dry. Okay, right here I have 200 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight yarn and it is dry. I added on some zip ties. Oh dear and I accidentally dipped part of it in the dye bath. Let me clean up. Thankfully, it wasn't the straight dye. Now I'm gonna have my tongs on hand. Now the reason why I decided to start dry is because, oh funny, you can see a little bit of the color there. I'm kind of hoping that we're gonna see some color breaking. How funny is it that this color ends up looking a little bit like my muck brown? Oh my goodness. Uh, there are, I know there's some fluorescent colors in here. We have primaries in here. I'm seeing brown and green. Like if I dip in and raise up, we can see some green notes behind. This is so pretty. I cannot tell how deep the colors are gonna be but I'm trying to go slow because, you know, maybe we'll capture some of those green notes and we'll have something broken. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna need to look, I mean, basically if you look at all the videos I've dyed so far this year, and especially there was a live stream I did in January, a lot of those were leftovers. Oh my gosh, we are totally breaking. Uh, so color breaking is when you have a bunch of different dye molecules and they bind to yarn at different rates. And so some of the pigments are binding a little bit faster. Those are probably a lot of those deep brown and some are binding slower. Those are those light greens. And because of that, we can see the separation of color because what we're leaving in first is getting more contact with the dyes. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. I want my spoon because sometimes in the middle of doing this, it's worth checking to see what the color of the water looks like. Oh, this is beautiful. 
I really expected something that was gonna be way more pink than what we're seeing here because I think we had a lot of pinks in there. This is so like forest tree-like. Oh, this is beautiful. I really hope that a lot of these greens are going to sort of stick around. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was explaining color breaking. Um, and so some molecules, and I don't know if it's about, it could be as simple as like the size of various molecules, but colors like deep magenta, which I believe there's some in here, bind to yarn super, super fast. And then we've got colors like emerald green, which maybe there's some in here, maybe not, emerald green, and fluorescent fuchsia that bind super slow. But ultimately, because of the way everything came together in our yarn, well, and in this bottle of leftovers, we have so many different colors that it is giving us something that is this very neutral brown and green. And oh my goodness, I am so happy and excited. Now I am gonna add a little more acid. One, two, three, four, just for good measure. Because we do see some more color in there, but I am so happy with how this turned out. And I was really expecting something, a lot of times leftovers and leave no die behinds of combined colors, they end up being sort of a rosy pink or maybe a dusty purple that tends to be the average. But I also have a huge bias towards cool toned colors. So, man, hard to say. But anyway, at this stage, cause we're still heating up, I'm gonna let this heat for 30 minutes and hopefully at that point we will have absorbed all the color. We've absorbed most of it, but I do see, still see some pigments in here. Uh, and so I'll come back in 30 minutes. Now, as for the leftovers, we probably could have used up 100% of this, but I think it's okay that we didn't. And honestly, <laughs> what I'm gonna do now is take these little bit of leftovers and add them on in until we fill things up. My hope was not to get something completely pastel out of this, and so far, it's not that pastel. So maybe we'll fill it up the rest of the way, and then do a whole other video to see what color we have left in here, knowing that our 40%, if I get the bottle all the way full, knowing that 40% of the volume gave us the color that we had already. Will it feel very similar or will things shift? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> and see, I have some dye stocks that are left over from projects I was working on today. Uh, and this I'm gonna put into a storage bottle to save and keep and I'll label it. But then I will rinse out whatever is left in these containers to put into here. Uh, I just, I'm not gonna add, you know, 200 milliliters of pink that I know has two grams of dye in it, that's really going to alter the proportions that we have in here because we have way, way, way less than one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid in here. So, yeah. But once, once I've moved these to other containers, then I'll rinse it out. See, I'm gonna take these stock solutions, set them aside, and just to show how I'm getting my leftovers, Ideally, I want to use as little water volume as possible, but given uh, what, how dirty these containers are, I'm gonna need to use a fair amount, but even so, you can get a sense of how much less color there is in here compared to uh, what was in, in these before when we had almost all of the dye, and I'm just, you know, there will be some dye left behind, but everything I can rinse off, and you know, I think there's a little more in here than there was in the other container that I showed you. But 
but now our color is at least a little bit different from what it was before. And you know what I didn't do? There's a little bit of sediment on the bottom. I didn't shake this super well before we did our other colorway. So it's possible that even without that dye I added just now, the color is different. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna need to use a lot of soap because this is very, very stained. That's the kind of thing that made this in the first place. But I'll see you in a little bit when we check in on our yarn. It's been 30 minutes. Our dye bath is looking really clear. And oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This feels very familiar. I mean, it's reminiscent of my quote muck dye where I mixed all of my jacquard acid dyes together. It reminds me, gosh, of some food colorings and stuff as well maybe, but uh, I don't actually have a spot to set it aside at the moment. <laughs> so the yarn's gonna hang out in here. I turned off the heat. It's gonna hang out in here to cool for a little bit until uh, some space opens up in my kitchen after I go wash some yarn, then I can set it aside. So I'll check in in a little while. More heat is not gonna hurt anything. It's been another 30 minutes or so. Now we happen to know that there are some pigments that do bleed uh, with heat. And so there are some pigments that you need to let the water cool off completely uh, to get the colors to bind onto the yarn. But that's not the case today. It's just emerald, emerald green is a color that'll bind, but then if you heat that again, the color will come back out. So uh, that is just something we know, but this is beautiful. I'm gonna set it aside to finish cooling so that way we can wash it. And I would say looking at this, the deepest part is not that dark. I probably could have used the entire bottle uh, on these 200 grams or maybe even 100 gram and been fine and not overloaded it. But it was fine to be safe and so yeah, I could have decided after seeing this that I wanted to add the rest of the color, but I love this so much that I didn't want to do another layer. Anyway, I'll see you soon so we can wash it. Oh, it's so muted. I keep expecting to see a little bit more red in here, like I would maybe with like a black food coloring. I feel like maybe McCormick's went a little bit greenish. Adding some dish soap. Oh man. I don't know. All I know is that this color combination is gorgeous. There isn't really a color that feels like it's a perfect muted variety of a lot of these. In general, pre-mixed dye colors don't have a ton of muted options. But that's mainly, I think, because those are combinations that you can make yourself and sometimes it's harder to do things that are bright. I don't know. All I know is that I definitely think I could have used up all of the dye on this. I think I said that already. But the good news, we have no color bleeding. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll look at the finished yarn. Here's the finished yarn. And I have to say that this is another example of where something looked way, way darker while wet especially for that deeper sort of very, very brownish purple end. Uh, the greens feel similar to what I saw before, but I did expect that it's really a purple to be a little bit deeper. You can really tell that these purpley pigments were striking fast because of the way, in some areas it does almost feel a little bit glazed, but you see a lot of that green peeking through. Oh, it's so pretty. Now, going through all the videos I've published so far this year isn't really going to give us an accurate depiction of the colors that all went into this mixture. But there were a lot of them, and <laughs> I mean, gosh, I feel like this has a lot more green than my quote muck dye from when I mixed all 40 jacquard colors. Uh, and I mean, I think that it is a lot less brown. I'm very curious what the color would be if I hadn't dip dyed. Uh, but I think that this sort of purpley color here is a good indication. Remember when I was saying, oh, I'm surprised it's not purple? <laughs> this is definitely a purple. <laughs> oh, do I have, what do I have? 
that's brown around here. Okay, here's an Ikea stool that has some warm browns in it. I feel like on camera it's looking even more yellow than it does in person, because uh, maybe there's a bit more red in person, but compared to this, this color is definitely in the purple family. And if you're curious, that's the stool where my black light usually lives. <laughs> Uh, sometimes there's colors, and like when I was dyeing this, I couldn't tell what the color really was, but now I can. It's a beautiful purple and sort of mint green colorway. Oh, amazing. Sometimes I have leave no dye behinds that I could replicate. Uh, maybe I could approximate the amount of dye that was left over if I have a tiny bit of a dye stock remaining. Or if I knew that I made dye stocks and that leftover dye from pouring the cup was what went into a colorway or I know the colors that of powders I use that I wiped onto a skein. Those are all things that, in theory, are reproducible. This is one of a kind. Now, in theory, maybe I could dye something that looked a little bit like it, but I don't think I could create a mixture of dyes that would break the same way this does and have the same depth of shade, the same total amount of dye pigment because those are both of my unknowns here. I have no idea how many grams of dye total went into creating this color and the proportions of the different pigments in there. Which isn't to say that we couldn't try to look at this and create a recipe to dye something similar. That is something that you could do, but maybe it wouldn't all work in one pot because maybe the colors wouldn't break the same way, or maybe they break in a different way. And so I had a lot of fun playing around with this as a mystery, and I hope that you did too. And I'm really excited to add more colors to this container over the next few months. I mean, we'll see how long uh, it takes, and then see where we end up. You can really see how purple it is right here. Oh, of course, we have one more thing we should try. can't tell. Maybe we have some fluorescence? A little bit. I'm not going to go into the closet, but I believe we had a bunch of fluorescent dyes there. Yeah, we have a bit of some glow. My hypothesis is that this pale green we're seeing is a combination of like a fluorescent green and pink, maybe. Uh, if you look at the video of me mixing uh, my fluorescent quote secondary colors we got some really amazing neutrals that glowed under a black light uh, and so things can look non-neon and still be fluorescent depending on how those uh, pigments are that we see under white light are kind of blended together but anyway that was pretty fun I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video I am always looking for other ways to explore color and yarn, and I have so much fun, and thank you for joining me on my color journey. And I also find that in reflecting over each of these dyeing projects, I learn a lot, and hopefully you do as well. And so my adventures can help you decide, these are the things I want to try, or those are the things I don't want to bother trying. So hopefully that is very helpful. Subscribe and turn on notifications. Please give the video a thumbs up. It's the biggest way to help support the content here. And if you want other ways to support all things Chemnitz, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, the shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos, and occasionally we have some really fun mystery pre-orders that you can uh, buy yarn for and then unwrap it when the video premieres, and that is always a lot of fun. I'll have links to my shop down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.